Oh my god, I'm live. Okay, so now how do I get Ozzo on here as well? Okay. Tried inviting Ozzo, but I don't know. There's Ozzo. Okay. Hi. So let me put this down here. <laughs> okay. How's it so going? Are you excited? So I mean, <laughs> that's so excited of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I'm so excited. Oh my God, I'm so excited and I just can't hide it. Anyone? Yes. Thank Is you. anyone watching us? I don't think anyone's watching us I don't think so. Yet. That's okay. Well, okay, what, we're just going to talk to ourselves. Well, what we can do is we can talk about the show because I think this is going to get saved on their Instagram channel so cool. anybody can watch it. So yeah, um, go ahead and talk about your show. What I'll do is I'll talk about it and then I'm going to ask you stuff because cool. I'm kind of boring. Okay, so this is the show. <laughs> this is, oh, uh, there's my phone um, giving me a reminder, ironically, to. It's true and it's. Okay. a spoof on women's self-help programs. And I will admit that several years ago, I participated in something similar to what we show in our show. And um, But I want to interject real quick and say that this character is a bit of a, um, she's a bit of a loser. She's not like Catherine. I don't Catherine's know. a smart woman. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think. She, I think she's character. a little more. I don't think your character's a loser, Azo. Do you see her as a loser? Um, as an actor, I, I interpret her in uh, in certain ways. Okay, that tell me would about that. Make me think that she's a, she's a bit of a loser. That. I mean, you know what? I think the uh, the audience when they come see the show, they can kind of make you know determine that for themselves. I I I can tell you one thing that I uh, and we definitely shouldn't give it away today, but um, I I think the ending was a surprise for me. Um, I was surprised by my character where she ends up in the end. Um, so I'm kind of excited. I'm kind of interested uh, in seeing what people, what people get out of that uh, when they come, when they see the show, you know, what the ending, like how they interpret it and what it means to them. Um, but I was, uh, but I can tell you that, that I was surprised by the ending. I, but I also think like, it's, it's very Catherine because Catherine, you know, your last show, it's, it's got that similar tone, you know, it's like, it's comedy, but it's like dark, <laughs> uh, biting humor, you know? So um, I am thrilled to, to be in it, but yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, finish, finish what you were saying. Cause you're actually giving a synopsis. Oh no. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I think I, I think I pretty much summed it up. Um, so Azo's character is named Barbara Brown and give us like the short summary of Barbara Brown. And then I'll tell people about my character. She's a, a web design. No, not a web designer. Shit. Yeah. I should know my character. Yeah. She is a web designer. I've done so well with my <laughs> character. Yeah. I'm a method actor. Um, anyhow, um, yeah, I mean, she's a web designer who is kind of down on her luck, has a kind of like a day job, like the rest of us, uh, that's, uh, we, you know, just um, a job for to live life, not really a job with any meaning or any passion. And it's just kind of her whole life is that way. And I feel like uh, Barbara Brown in some ways is, even though even I call her a loser, I think in some ways she's like every other person. Oh, so many of the other people that I know my age and people in their thirties and maybe even younger and maybe, but potentially, I mean, even older, like twenties, thirties, forties, you know, you, you see this, uh, you know, most people go through life just kind of, I'm sorry. Do you hear that in the background? <laughs> it's live. Oh, you don't hear it. Okay. No. Good. What is it? Um, I was going to say something really like uh, dirty, but no, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> are your neighbors doing it, Azo? <laughs> oh man, because we want yes, to. Yes, they that. are. Now I'm getting. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you want to? Okay. Yes. Um, 
But I mean, I think in some ways, Barbara Brown is very similar to how we all are. You know, she's dissatisfied with her life. Uh, she's dissatisfied with her, with her um, love life, with her, you know, career. And she's kind of trying to find herself. She's, she's just kind of living life day to day with uh, very little hope. Um, so in, in a sense, uh, she's very similar to uh, what we all kind of feel sometimes or maybe all the time. Everybody to a varying degree feels how she feels. And so I think, you know, in that sense, I was really able to connect with the character. But yeah, so. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I mean, I think that's really all you need to know about this character. Unless you want to say more about her. She's a writer. Uh -huh. Well, I think you nailed it. She's definitely an every woman. And or, or sure. that was the intention anyway. You know, we'll see how people react to it. Like you said, you, can, <laughs> you like, never yeah, know. She's, what... she's a loser. <laughs> she sucks. No, <laughs> but don't we, we all? <laughs> we all do. Like, we all feel like we suck. And, you know, these are all feelings that everybody goes through. But yeah, yeah I mean, I, I she's definitely the every woman I, I like the way you describe that because that's true I think I definitely see her that way that's solid and you said I just I want to go back to something you said I love your earrings oh thank you yeah <laughs> these are um, I guess these are like my Oedipus earrings for no I'm just Ooh. kidding anyways so. <laughs> anyways <laughs> going back to what we're talking about back to yeah. what we're talking about um so you said jokingly that you were a method actor is that a true statement or a false statement uh half 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 half. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I use some. Uh, you know, I I'm an actor. I've acted for many years, and so I do utilize some method. But I don't. You know, um, I I'm not like fully a method actor. I think at some point I kind of was wanted to be experimented with it but um I, i'm not fully a method actor but i do i have learned it and it is something that i really respect and it's a really great uh acting method <laughs> um but uh yeah I know. you saw what i what i did there i'm a writer too so i see that i got these dumbass jokes coming left and right um but uh yeah you know uh but yeah i'm glad you caught that because yeah i do i do i do utilize some of the um, acting method in my toolbox, but not fully. Well, you know, something that I noticed last night when we were doing our rehearsal, um, so that everybody knows we're performing this musical on Zoom. And yes. the way that I wrote it was, um, you know, two people and Azo plays her character, Barbara Brown, for most of the show. I think she gets to switch. How many times do you get to switch? Just like a couple times, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then my character, it's... the self-help guru, Sarah Samantha Summers, that's the character I play for most of the show, but then I, I switch a few times. And since we're on Zoom, I thought, well, wouldn't it be fun to use all kinds of wacky props, like wigs and baseball hats? Yeah, I love and wigs. First stalls oh, and what, whatever. But what was really cool was yesterday, Azo showed up with like a whole bunch of props that I hadn't even been expecting. And if you go look at our Instagram story right now, you can see a few of them. Yeah. Wait, okay, which one? I can't even um, remember. Oh, yeah, it's my shoes. The oh. shoe, the wine glass, oh, the cookies. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the cookies, of course. That is the cookie, you guys. Anyone who's watching this, the cookie is very important <laughs> not that important but it is in our show and you should come see it for the cookie alone <laughs> it's gonna make you want one it's gonna make you want a cookie or maybe not but maybe i don't know i feel like famous amos maybe or not. somebody mrs fields should give us a sponsorship <laughs> or trader joe's or trader joe's with their joe's. sparkling <laughs> grapefruit water that you were drinking <laughs> sparkling sparkling grapefruit that would be outstanding yeah so Azo you mentioned that you're a writer can you tell us like a little bit more about what you've written it's time to plug <laughs> it's time bring it bring it on time to plug <laughs> all right um yeah so I guess it's time for me to plug my show <laughs> 
Um, I've written a show, a solo show, I Heart Maroc. It's about my time in the Peace Corps. You're so sweet, Catherine, for bringing it up. Um, and I won't take too much time to talk about it because this is all about your play. But it is uh, for anyone who's interested in, um, you know, checking it out. I will be performing it on January 29th at 8 p.m. at the White Fire Theater, which is located in um, uh, uh, North Hollywood, California, somewhere. <laughs> Where's White Fire? It's down that way. It's in Los Angeles anyway. Um, so uh, you can check out the website. You can check out my uh, Instagram page. I should. I think I have a. I think I have a, a link to that. But again, uh, it's it's about my time in the Peace Corps. I've written. Um, I've oh, someone else just joined us. Yay! Um, hello, <laughs> welcome hello. to hanging out with us. Azo is Anytime just telling us about us. her solo show, and yeah. uh, I will relate it back to our Tucson Fringe show. But you can finish what you're saying just you know that I'm a writer and I that's this is the project this is like my uh, passion project I heart Maroc because um, it's about my time in the Peace Corps and you know the the, the lessons I learned uh, so I hope you guys will check it out so now back to you Catherine uh, <laughs> well what I was gonna say is you know we met each other because we were both working with Jessica Lynn Johnson who's a director yes. who directs lots and lots and lots of solo shows. So you had a solo show and I had a solo show and we were taking her classes and- yeah, She's um, amazing. Definitely. And so I guess, you know, I want to talk about the fact that you play a lot of different characters yes. in your show. And yeah. then in this show, you play one character, but then you've got some extra characters as well. And like, mm -hmm. how do you think that your solo work and your writing has an impact on what you do in Thank You, It's True? Um, I think uh, prior to my solo show, um, even though I was a writer and an actor, I did, when I wrote, it was for other people. When I acted, it was other people's work. Um, I rarely got to do my own show. Um, so it was really empowering to me actually as a solo performer. And I really do encourage uh, actors to, to venture into solo performance at some point, you know, to at least uh, look at it because uh, I'd been wanting to do a solo show for many years. But anyway, that's, that's, that's beside the point. How many years? But I want to know. It was empowering. <laughs> um, for many years, actually, I saw a friend of mine do her show. Her name is Masha Dowell. She's not on here. Um, but uh, shout out to Masha. Um, and she uh, and I saw her show Black Womanology uh, and she was actually working with Jessica and this was back in 2018 I believe or 2017 or 2018 and uh, even prior to that I wanted to do a solo show but that was like the moment for me I was like I want to do a solo show when I saw her on stage and I saw what she was doing and how impactful it was uh, for the audience and and I could see how much how empowering it was for her too as an as an actor and writer and you know uh so that's why I, that's when i started uh really thinking about writing a solo show but i didn't write one until the pandemic hit and i was uh teleworking you know just working at home full time and then i just kind of started getting really creative um as a writer and and i was like well you know since i don't have other actors to to, to do it you know i was forced to be the actor um but yeah, so that, I, I think that answers your show, uh, your question. I don't know. Well, you know, definitely. And you talked about the fact that it was the pandemic that got you working on your yes. own stuff. And it's interesting because this show is kind of the child of the pandemic as well, because the right. way it started was my friend Shirley Coggan and I wanted to write something mm -hmm. together. And we went to Tucson Fringe in January mm -hmm. 2020 before the whole world shut down. So we could get some inspiration. And as we were driving in the car, we started talking about, you know, what are we going to write a show about? And we both realized that we had done a fair amount of self-help personal growth. And so we started talking and that was how we came up with this idea. But what's interesting is that she and I started working together, like on actually writing it on Zoom during the pandemic. So I was working on this. I actually started on this one before I started my solo show and so mm -hmm. it's interesting what you were talking about that it was really the pandemic that opened up this creative yeah. gateway 
for you. And it did the exact same thing for me, both with Thank You, It's True and with my yeah. show. So that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. And and I feel like, um, you know, uh, a lot of my uh, artist friends are saying the same thing that during the pandemic, they got like super creative and started like writing all these things and uh, doing all these performances like on Zoom or um, that, that they never even expected or they didn't even know that they had that that amount of creativity. But it's like when the world stopped and we were forced to just kind of uh, sit down and just be with ourselves and, and to for everything was quiet. And I think that's when, you know, people started to, to get creative. And, and um, I'm hearing some feedback. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> making it difficult for me to speak because I'm hearing the feedback. But no, that's um, hard. I hear you fine. Okay, cool, cool. Um, maybe it's my uh, ear ear um from or what is this what is this called the ear pod ear pods darn those apple products <laughs> damn you apple wait wait hold on let's say nice things about apple maybe they'll sponsor us <laughs> uh, <laughs> well we did I mean, here, we, here we are using iphones and using their oh, true, computers true. and stuff so yeah no but i personally i'm still holding out for mrs fields i think mrs fields would be the ultimate sponsor <laughs> mrs for fields would totally love us Right. For we're, those the, you, we're the gals for them. <laughs> for those of you just joining, there is a chocolate chip cookie that figures prominently in our show called Thank You, It's True. It's a new Zoom musical featuring uh, Barbara Brown, a uh, hot mess of a 37-year-old woman, and also Sarah Samantha Summers, a self-help guru. And there's a great moment where Sarah Samantha Summers encourages Barbara Brown to eat a chocolate chip cookie to help discover herself, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that was a great description of it. So, um, you know what I'm curious about is um, your love of music and the musical aspect of your play. Um, I kind of want to know a little bit about that and, and where that comes from. Well, I guess, I mean, I'm a, I'm a musician. I'm a classically trained percussionist of all things yeah. because the world, there's really a high demand for those in the world. <laughs> okay. And you're really good at it too. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's true. Thank you. It's true. <laughs> true. <laughs> um, so I think that the way it started for me was that I started writing songs and my very first solo show that I did in 2018 was literally just a bunch of songs that I had written that I smushed together because I didn't understand that you need more than that to have like an actual play, you know, and then I met Jessica and quickly learned. Um, but since you know, that went well with my second solo show. Thank you. Not thank you, Sue. Uh, yes, no, maybe so. I know the title of my own solo show. I, I wasn't sure if I was going to add music to that. And Jessica Lynn Johnson, my director, was like, oh, but, you know, in her kind of, I don't want to say passive aggressive because it wasn't passive aggressive, but she was like, you know, you're really good at writing songs. Maybe you should put some songs in. And I was like, oh. <laughs> But then she was right. Like, she was right. It needed songs, and that yeah. worked out really well. So I think with this one, it was just, there was no question, like, are there going to be songs in the show? Songs. Of course yeah. there are going to be songs in the show. And my, my co-writer, Shirley Coggins, she's a musician as well. She's a trumpet oh, nice. player. So I think we knew that music was going to be a part of it, you know, from day one. I think the world needs more trombone players. I agree. And I actually mean that. I actually mean that. I agree. <laughs> I love the trombone. And she's really good, too. Like, she's really good, and she has a background in improv and all these kinds of things. Nice. No yeah. way. So maybe if, you know, if we do something like, I don't know, take it to Hollywood Fringe or something, maybe there could oh, be recordings that involve totally. trombone as well. I don't know. <gasps> That'd be so cool. You like that? Okay, okay. Yes, I actually do. I do like that very much. But see, I'm surprised, too, because you're a really great singer. So how did Thank how did you. you get started with that? Oh, that's so interesting because um, I love opera. <laughs> oh, that's Anyone great. who knows me. Anyone who knows me, yes. I know, you, I know you like classical music a lot and all your classical music references in your show. I was just like, oh my God, that's so amazing. Someone who gets me. <laughs> Anyways, um, so that's how I connected with your show. I mean, in many ways, but that one for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, I grew up loving music. I wanted to be an actor all my life, but I, I went to an arts high school and I majored in music and I was an opera singer 
And Wait, I, where are you and from? For, I, Los Angeles. Okay. And uh, for for a few years, I actually thought I was going to be the next Maria Callas. Anyone who knows who she is, she's one of the greatest opera singers of all time. And that was and you look like my her. goal. So. I do look like her. I do. It's really scary <laughs> um, and, and amazing because I love her so much. And um, she was, her voice was brilliant. But at some point I realized, even though I love opera so much and I love music so much, that, that I don't really have that, that I don't, like, don't really have the talent for it <laughs> as much as I'd love to. And I didn't have the drive. Yeah. I didn't have the drive to be an opera singer. You know, it takes a lot of drive and a lot of like auditions, just like with acting a similar type of thing and yet and and yet for whatever reason I'm okay I'm a masochist <laughs> when it comes to acting I'm like okay with all the rejection but for opera I just couldn't take it you know the rejection it was really too harsh for me like and plus I didn't think you know I didn't think I was as good as some of the great singers around me I mean I I went to an arts high school there were a lot of great singers um and it was just really hard for me uh so I, I quit. I quit opera and I just, I went on to focus more on acting. And then as for writing, that became more of a, a, a goal in my 30s in the past decade and not, not much younger. Because uh, oddly enough, you know, when I was younger, I was like, I'm just going to be a star and people are going to write roles for me. That's what's gonna happen, and like that didn't happen. <laughs> well, I, well, it kind of did here a little bit, a little bit. It did, it did, absolutely. <laughs> You're Catherine. If I become a star, it's gonna be because of you. That's right. And I thank you. It's true. <laughs> yes, I can't help it. I love it. The title's fun, but anyways, so that's me. Um, okay. So what have yeah. you written for other people? Because you mentioned that. Yeah, I mean, I've just written like a lot of short plays and I'm working on a film right now, a short film. And I wrote one for the 48 hour film, uh, film festival. Um, I've been writing, I have a couple of ideas for uh, a couple of plays. I don't really want to give it away right now, but um yeah, and, and I've written uh, some plays for, like, festivals and stuff, the the Support Women Artists Now festivals. Um, so, yeah, um, uh, that's, that's the, like, the, the writing projects that I've done. What's but, it like? I want to write a film, a short film that I want to produce next year, but we'll see because, you know, writer's block when it comes to that particular film. Yeah, no, I know what that's like. Um, yeah. What's it like to see other people perform something that you wrote? Oh my God, it's amazing. Um, the last thing that I wrote was for, for a festival and uh, a relatively successful actress played like one of the roles. And she was someone that I, I'd kind of seen growing up, like performing in like a big television show. <laughs> and, and she was really cool. Like, and when I first met, when I first saw her doing the role, what I really appreciated about her, and this is kind of to every actor out there, um, as a writer, I always uh, appreciate it when I see a, an actor really understand and, and do exactly as I've written. I absolutely hate it when people start moving stuff around and, and omitting stuff and not doing, you know, then it's like, oh, okay, so you don't think I'm, you know, you don't want to do what was written. And so this woman was so professional, this actress, and, and she's, you know, as I said, a, rel a relatively successful actress. And she did such an amazing job. It was, I remember, like, I got really emotional. I'm a very emotional person in general, but I got really emotional with that. And, and I remember thinking to myself, that was the moment I thought, and it wasn't too long ago, it was like a year and a half ago or so. No, a year ago. Um, it, I, I remember thinking to myself, yeah, I could definitely, I, I could definitely, uh, I could definitely do this, <laughs> you know, the writing, the writing part, the, yeah, the acting, like it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a lifelong passion. You know, I don't think I'll ever give up acting. Yeah. No matter what. 
I hear that. I hear that. Oh, and you... Someone loved that. Thank you. <laughs> whoever, whoever loved what I just said. It's true. Well, I think every actor feels that way. Oh, definitely, definitely. And we've got some new folks joining us. Um, I'm Catherine cool. Barnes, Hi, this everyone. is Azo Sapo, and we are the uh, performers of Yes, No, No, sorry, that's my other show. <laughs> Thank you, it's true, a new uh, two-person musical that's all about uh, women's self-help and how ridiculous it is. And Azo was just telling me about other shows that she's written that she's written for other people, and I was gonna share with Azo Yes. This show is the first time that I am writing something for somebody else. No way. Way. And so it's very cool That's to me. Really cool. Yeah, it's I cool. feel very honored to be a part of this event. I mean, in general, but that's really cool. I'm I'm really excited about it that um that I get to um you know, that I get to perform and hopefully uh do justice to what your vision is for the show. Um, that's really exciting. Thank you. Well, and the fact for that you showed involving up, me, the fact that you showed up yesterday to our rehearsal with like, you know, all the props, oh, the Trader Joe's fizzy water and the cookie and the purse. And the, I think you're going to bring a lighter next time even. Yes, I, I am. Yes. No, I'm this gonna is going to be. Lighter. Hopefully I won't light the room on fire or something. And then it's like, oh, great. You know, this idiot actor. Mm. This method actor. No, I was going to go there. I was going to go there, but you went there. You knew I was going to go there, yeah. Yeah. Outstanding. Well, I know we've got at least one person here right now. I know Matt has a Tucson Fringe show that he Hi, is Matt. doing. He's another solo artist, so that's really oh, cool. cool. Azo and I are, have both done a lot of solo theater, and this is kind of my first time venturing away from solo theater. So, um, so cool. So that's really interesting. And so, Azo, remind us when we can see your solo show that's coming up. Oh, sure. Sure. Um, for the solo performers, um, or anyone, uh, at my solo show, uh, I'm performing it at the White Fire Theater for Solo Fest 2022. Uh, it's on January 29th at 8 p.m. Is it streaming? Uh, it will also stream. It will be, um, yeah you can find that information on their website as well. Mm -hmm. So before this whole pandemic shutdown thing, had you done a lot of streaming theater or is this a new medium? <gasps> oh, totally new, totally new. At first, you know, at first I didn't know what the heck I was doing. Even now I'm like, it's shaking. And I apologize for that everyone. Cause I don't have a stand for my phone and I, I'm not on my computer. Um, so it's just, so badly done on my end but um but no just no <laughs> this is totally it was totally new to me two years ago like I'd never I didn't I didn't even know what zoom was two years ago um yeah. and so but I quickly figured out because I was the artistic director of play club west which is a, a play reading group um in Los Angeles county in, in uh Hollywood California and um, we were doing our readings on Zoom. We were like, okay, well, you got to do something. We can't just stop our lives. And so we started doing our stuff on, on Zoom. And, um, and it was a learning experience. We even had like festivals and stuff on Zoom. I, I joined, yeah, oh my God, it was crazy. But super fun. And it's been really interesting. And I've, what's the great thing about Zoom and... and Ooh, I lost you. No, I can see you, but I can't hear you. My phone after all. There we go. Oh, you can't hear me? I can hear you now. Hi, I'm back. I'm back. Um, I didn't know what I was saying. Well, we were talking about Zoom and we've got only a few minutes left, so we should probably start wrapping it up. But I was just going to say, you know, I've, I've done streaming theater. So like at the White Fire Theater, just like you, where they've got they've got it all kitted out and they've got, you know, all of the absolute best technology and they were doing streaming for years before the pandemic even hit, right? Which is amazing, yeah. It is, it is. And so it was great that they were prepared, but you know, I've done that a bunch of times. And then also like you, I've done staged readings of my own shows on Zoom. And I think I'm really, I was very surprised by how much people liked it when it was just in its basic Zoom format. So even though it's yeah. been very like, nail biting and very scary to be doing a musical on zoom especially when there's all the issues with latency and time delay and all that like i just think it's this really cool tool that we have yeah. that 
is, you know, relatively inexpensive and can bring our stuff to more people. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I completely agree with you. And, and then also allows artists. I'm so sorry, you guys. It's like my, my phone is a, uh, uh, moving around. Um, but, uh, it also allows artists to connect with each other in like, I mean, I, I, I would never have connected with artists in Tucson, but it looks like, you know, perhaps there are artists here who are going to watch this who are in Tucson who would like to connect with us. And I mean, gosh, before that, I, who, who would have been able to do that or, or you for, you know, cause you, you're in San, San Diego and I, I never would have connected yeah. with you. We never would have met. Right. I never would, would have done this project together because I'm in Los Angeles. You're in San Diego. There you go. So, so it's amazing. It's incredible. Opening up new worlds, connecting Absolutely. people despite the latency and time delays. We're Absolutely. Work. So Absolutely. Anyway, I think we're about at the end of our time. But hey, Azo, thank you so much for coming on here to talk to me. And if anybody is watching this in retrospect, we are promoting a new Zoom musical called Thank You, It's True. It's starring Ozzy Safo and myself, Catherine Barnes. And it was written You by, are the writer. It was written by me, Catherine Barnes, along with my friend, Shirley Coggin. And it's a very, um, Tucson Fringe has been very central in this because it was on the way to Tucson Fringe in 2020 that we came up with this idea. So I'm really excited that we're premiering it at Tucson Fringe. And I oh, look forward- Both circle. Both circle. I look forward to participating in this festival as much as I can from a distance. So. Yay. Yay. Anyways, um, thanks so much, Azo. And I'm going to, I don't you. know how I do this. But... I think you just click on the X. On the X? Okay, let's see yeah. if that works. Bye, guys.